Okay, so Hugh, don't hold back because I know sometimes you, I mean, you are like the kindest, nicest DJ on Radio One, mm. but like for this, maybe, mm. you know, mm. get him. Go for it, yeah. Get of him. Course, yeah. Love Chris Dark. Okay, mm-hmm. so first of all, we kind of banned Great British Bake Off, as we're saying, from Indian Bingo because they know exactly what they're doing. But this one's okay, I think, because I don't think it's done on purpose. It's from last night's show, Water Please, mm-hmm. and this contestant, N. Weezer. This is where you need to be really strong. Uh, typically, I do this on the floor because it gets so stiff. I'm not sure if I'm allowed. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, I wish we'd binned it now. <laughs> <laughs> now, over to ITV's This Morning, where Aggie McKenzie from Kim and Aggie <laughs> is giving some tips. <laughs> do you remember Kim and Aggie? They were a lot, weren't they? <laughs> all, she did, all she did was, like, every week go... And clean this with white vinegar. <laughs> that was the advice every single week. <laughs> anyway, they've got some more tips for us on this morning. And as we join them, Eamon is taking a step back while Ruth and Aggie discuss a problem that they seem to both have. Have you ever gone to it after a few days and you've got a little bit of slime in the bottom a little there? Bit. It's like something's died. Yeah. It? A really good way of um, avoiding this is to line your drawers with kitchen paper so that it will absorb the moisture. <laughs> yes, you. He was first to spit there today. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good tip, though. Good tip. Uh, Line your drawers with kitchen paper so that it will absorb the moisture. Thank you, Martin, for that. Talking about the manky vegetable drawer there, of course. Okay, water, please. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I had no idea Hugh looked like that. Mm. He looks like a little puppy, says someone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so cute now to a clip from last month's Tour de France on ITV2 sorry ITV4 mm. as if the Tour de France would be on ITV2 mm. <laughs> only if Towie went there uh, <laughs> now I know it gets scary going so fast down those mountains but I really wasn't expecting anyone to react this badly to it a nine minute deficit at the moment for Alberto Contador and the skid marks left on the road after the fall were over 100 metres long. Oh. Oh. What was that noise? Oh, I should have known. <laughs> oh. My quiff, my quiff is ruined. Oh, oh no. Not his quiff. I've got three minutes to get that right. Oh, gutted. That was oh. good. That was a good one. Thank you to Kenny for finding that clip. And the skid marks left on the road after the fall were over 100 metres long. Oh. <laughs> Skid marks. Oh. <laughs> okay, water please. Mm-hmm. Come on, we're making it's a wet one today. Mm-hmm. Our favourite clip from Tuesday's really overtired in your bingo now. We were really tired. It's online if you want to watch it. Over to Radio 4, where Stephen Fry has been helping his cousin. Chris. <laughs> Might want to refill there, Chris. Mm. <laughs> oh, he's lost it now. <laughs> Thing is, when we say it's Stephen Fry, he knows what's coming. I can tell. Because he was here on Tuesday, see? I haven't heard this one. It's like Chris's reaction. Right. Mm. Stephen Fry helping his cousin here with something that he's quite the dab hand at. Ready? Mm-hmm. But the Wild West... Do- Chris. We're having a repeat of Tuesday, aren't we now? <laughs> <laughs> Keep your water in there, dear. <laughs> like a leaky roof. Uh-huh. Are you ready? Uh-huh. But the Wild West does supply some useful clues, as I only recently recalled while I was helping my cousin jack off a horse. It is a two-man job, I suppose. (laughs) Uh, He's the best. Stephen Fry there. Helping my cousin jack off a horse. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You should get him on any head of bingo. He'd be great, wouldn't he? (laughs) Do you reckon he'd do it? Yeah. (laughs) He appears quite a lot. Okay, water please. (laughs) We're going back to ITV now for a show called Secrets from the Clink. Is that one? Mm. Where Len Goodman, seven, (laughs) is finding out what one of his ancestors used to get up to while serving time in jail. You ready? Len's ancestor Henry was trying to earn premature discharge from his long penal stretch. (laughs) 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 
Again. <laughs> Len's ancestor Henry was trying to earn premature discharge from his long penal stretch. <laughs> 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 oh, that might be my new fave. <laughs> I really hope that Len never follows in his ancestors' footsteps. <laughs> Water, please. Premature discharge from his long penal stretch. Okay. Over to this week's Saturday Kitchen next. And Paloma Faith was giving some top advice for anyone who gets a little bit bored by doing their job. Before you were a singer, mm. before you were in the pub, you were jack of all trades, really. A magician's assistant. Yeah. I hear. What was that like? Not as glamorous as you would think. No? <laughs> yeah, six Lydia. hours in a box with a rabbit is not fun. You get cramped. <laughs> <laughs> Mark found that one for us. If you see anything on TV that sounds a bit rude but isn't meant to be, scott.mills at bbc.co.uk. Send me an email with the rough time it was on in the channel. Six Lydia. hours in a box with a rabbit is not fun. You get cramped. <laughs> Thanks, Paloma. <laughs> Anything oh, she wow. says is good, isn't it? Paloma? I know. She should do like an audio book. I'd listen to. I that. would. I yeah. would get that. She's good. <laughs> okay. Next on Inu and Avingo, a documentary from the weekend, presented by Kate Adie. Mm. And there's nothing really that you can do about this clip. You've just got to kind of sit there and brace yourself. Now, Kate tells us about an organisation that's called the First Aid Nursing Yeomanry. Here we go. First into action on the home front was the aristocracy. Society ladies used to using their social clout. Young girls joined the first aid nursing yeomanry, the fanny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, makes sense though, that's what it's called. First aid nursing yeomanry, the fanny. Okay. Mm. Oh. Water please. All right, come on you. Mm. Mm -hmm. They need to get closer to each other. They're dry as a bone, says someone. People are requesting Deirdre Barlow saying about her getting her grazia wet. I love when they do requests. We should do a request special on Indio Nabingo, shouldn't we? That's a great idea. Write that down. Okay, BBC News now. And we've got an update on the recent storm here. Mm. And not even this experienced weather expert was expecting the storm to do this. Listen. Hurricane Bertha, which a week ago was near Florida, but since then it's been wanking its way across the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's no a bad way. one. No way. That was a bad wanging one. its way across the Atlantic, you know, wanging, flinging, bombing its way across. Not like, what he said. A bit like welly wanging, of <laughs> course. It's been said. wanging its way across the Atlantic. Thank you, Janet, for that one. <laughs> was that um, your favourite? Your, your weatherman friend? Shafanaka. Yeah. I don't know, actually. I don't think it was. It wasn't Shafanaka. And <laughs> more water, finally, uh -huh. on an old episode of Life on Earth here, David Attenborough is greeted by a truly mesmerising sight. This is the greatest gash that exists in the surface of the earth. <laughs> From the rim to the river at the bottom <laughs> is a vertical mile. There are a number of trails down and the usual way is to make the trip on the back of a mule. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Unbelievable. And that was today's Indian well, Bingo with Hugh well Stevens. Done, Chris. Soaking Scott.